Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to an updated mod spotlight on ComputerCraft. That's right, ComputerCraft is currently version 1.5, and it's added a bunch of nifty gadgets. First off, one of the new things added is wired modems, which allow you to communicate similar to wireless modems, but you can actually use wired modems with peripherals like the monitor or printer, or some of the other peripherals that are part of the MISC peripherals and other add-ons uh, to ComputerCraft. So it's a pretty nifty addition, and also a couple minor changes to uh, a couple other blocks, and some other things but before we get all into it uh, I want to show you guys how this whole uh, wired modem things work so without further ado let's start checking out the wired modems and network cabling that's now part of computer craft version 1.5 so like I said, wired modems. Uh, as you guys know, the uh, existing version of uh, this mod had wireless modems, uh, which now require an ender pearl to get hooked up. Uh, but if you want wired modems, you can just go ahead and use a piece of redstone inside that block uh, square of stone. So wired modems versus wireless modems. Your call, whichever one you want to make. Uh, but the wired modems are really neat. First off, uh, you can hook them up to the side of a computer just like I've got one here. Let's hook up a new system right here. So simply place down your computer and uh, right click, shift right click to place down the modem. And then you can go ahead and place your um, network cable right here. Network cable is actually pretty easy to make. Just uh, four stone and some redstone gets you six of them. So really not too hard in terms of uh, the recipe there. And then you've got your uh, com monitors. So let's place down monitors, which is a good demonstration, right? So always like monitors in a you know four by three I'll just go four by two for now and then you can place the wired modem on any side and then hook the network cabling in now uh, if you want you can also hook this stuff up to another computer which I'll demonstrate right here and just need another wired modem in there nice so now we've got uh, both a computer and a monitor hooked up all kind of on its own little network with this guy. So this monitor and uh, these two computers can all talk to each other. Awesome. Uh, let's take a look at some of the functions that are now available uh, to interact with these things. All right, the first function that's available to you is the peripheral.getNames function. What that's going to do is it's going to return a table, and I'm storing that in the variable called names, and then I'm going to print out everything that's in that table. So you can see I have just a little print table function up here that I wrote real quick to demo this, okay? So let's see what happens when I run the demo program. Cool. Uh, it's listing one peripheral, this guy in the back. That's because he's currently not activated. If you want to, you can right click here and boom, peripheral computer one connected. Excellent. And you can activate this guy and we'll activate this guy as well. Cool. So now all these guys are talking to each other. And if I run the same exact program demo, we can see that back is still listed, but we've also got monitor two and computer two. So we've got two computers on this network, right? This is computer one and this is computer two awesome. Uh, now, if I were to go ahead and run the same program over here, we'd see something a little bit different. So here I'm going to run demo, and we'll see that uh, the computers or the, or the peripherals hooked up to this computer uh, is the right modem. Uh, we've also got monitor 2 and computer 2. So that's or monitor 1. Uh, yeah, monitor 2 and computer 1. Okay, that makes sense. So that's what we've got here. So monitor two and computer two, and computer one and monitor two. So this guy is referenced as monitor two. And here's a nifty program right over here. Same deal, right? Got some cabling hooked up. Everything's running over to that monitor. This guy is actually listed as monitor one over here. So we've got these nifty little networks all separated, and they can communicate with their respective items. Now let's check out another interesting little gadget. So we can go ahead and edit demo, and we're going to go ahead and do the following. Here we are showing you the isPresent command. You can specify the name of a peripheral and find out if it's present on this network. Now, uh, what I'm doing here is just printing out the results of that, which comes out to be true or false. So running demo, it comes back as true because I'm saying, hey, do you have anything on this network called monitor2? Well, obviously, you can see right here we do, so it came back as true. Uh, however, if I said, uh, do you have anything on the network called monitor3? False. Nope. Not there. Okay? Real simple. Now the next one to show you guys is the function called uh, get type. So we're going to print peripheral.get type of monitor2. What type of peripheral is monitor2? Gee, I wonder. But we're going to find out. Okay? Demo. And you get monitor. So the monitor2 is of type monitor, okay? And uh, if we wanted to, we could check out what the type of computer2 is. Shouldn't be too hard to do. 
there we go, it's type computer. So you can find out what type of peripheral you have once you uh, determine exactly what you're looking at. Now if you wanted to, you could say, hey, I've got all these different peripherals hooked up. So you could really, if you wanted to, like just, you know, right now they're all stored in the names variable, right? So I could, uh, you know, come out here and just say, you know, names bracket two, which one is that? Uh, I can print out that it's either monitor two and I can also determine the type. So in the code I can say like, hey, that's a monitor, all right. I know what I can do with that thing, but maybe you don't know what you can do with it. So let's go ahead and create uh, the following piece of code. This here, uh, peripheral.getMethods, will return all the methods in a table for you. So uh, if I want to print this out, I'm going to have to run the print table command for methods. Okay, let's see what we get now. Boom. Uh, right, scroll, set cursor position, set cursor blink, get cursor position, get size, all the stuff that you guys can do on a monitor. So just like if a computer was touching the monitor over here, okay, and you can interact with it, here's a list of all the functions that you can interact with it over the network, and it should be pretty much exactly the same. You can check whether or not it's a color monitor, you can set the background color and the text color, even the text scale, and clear it all out. Nice, right? So now that we know uh, how to detect and determine what's connected to it, how do we interact with these guys? Really not too hard. We can just run uh, the peripheral dot call, and then we can tell it which peripheral we want to talk to. So I'm going to tell it to talk to monitor underscore two. Then I'm going to tell it which function to call. Uh, so in this one, I'm going to call the write function, which will write some message to the monitor. But how do we tell it which uh, what, what to write? Well, it's really easy. Just another uh, line here. We can say write the word hello world. Cool. Now when I run the demo command, we should see hello world show up on the monitor. Boom. Hello world. Excellent. So that's how you interact with uh, remote peripherals. Now, if we wanted to, we could do something similar. So let's take a look here. Uh, let's edit demo here. I want to find out what methods are available on computer two. Like, what can I do to that guy? Demo. Uh, we can turn on, shut down, reboot, and get ID. Okay, let's uh, shut it down. Cool. So we're going to do peripheral.call. Computer two, shut down. Ta-da, the computer is now shut down. So I can right click on it to turn it back on. You can see it's running again, but next time I run the demo program, it shuts down the computer. So that's how you can interact with different things. And of course you can do the same thing with the printer peripheral. So if you're using printers in your world, you can do pretty much the exact same deal. Uh, we can even hook one up here and see how it works real fast. So I'm just gonna come over here Put down my printer, hook up a wired modem to it. Might need this guy to go one block further away. There we go. And we'll just activate that guy. Peripheral printer underscore zero connected. So what's available to our printer? What methods are available for printer underscore zero? Ah, you can do the right, set cursor position, get page sides, new page, end page, all the stuff that you guys saw in the previous spotlight where I showed you how to interact with those things. And of course, uh, we can do the same thing on this computer. So this computer can go ahead and send messages to both the printer, computer one, and the monitor as well. Nice. So you can see this guy is set up the same way. I had pretty much the exact same program in here. This is how I was kind of learning all these different commands. So that is uh, the um, wired modem, network cables, and peripherals. Now, speaking of monitors, there's actually a pretty nifty change that was made. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. This is kind of something I was hoping for, and it was done. You can now place monitors on the ground or on the ceiling if you want. How cool is that, right? Just make sure to place it right. There we go. Nice. So uh, if we wanted to, we could hook up a, a little wire here and we'll hook this guy up. So what do we got available to us now? Don't forget, right click the thing. Computer peripheral one disconnected. We want to right click this thing. Monitor three is now connected. Cool. So we can edit demo and we'll uh, go ahead and connect to monitor three and write hello world. Demo. Hello world. Oh man, that's cool. Monitors on the floor. Are you kidding me? That is awesome. How about on the ceiling? So we could have something like this. 
cool. So those are the main features that you guys will probably be messing with. Now there's one other thing that's changed, and it's a little bit not so much of a big change, but it's behind the scenes, and you can hook into it if you want, and that's called the modem API. And you can use both the wired and the wireless modems uh, for this purpose. Now, in the past, you guys have used RedNet, and the RedNet methods, uh, you know, were used to send messages and information between two computers on wireless modems. Uh, but what we've got now is the modem API. RedNet still works. It's still exactly the same as it was, but RedNet really hooks into the modem API and does things automatically. For you, So you can still use RedNet just the way you have in the past, as far as I understand it. There's really no reason not to, unless you want to get super technical and do some other deep and involved cool stuff. And for that, we're going to want to use the modem API. And what the modem API lets you do is actually send messages across uh, two different computers using channels. So why don't I get a little demonstration system set up here and we'll see how it works. All right, so like I said, in the past you're used to RedNet, where you can just say, hey, listen for a message on RedNet, good to go wait for it to come in and then you can say send this message on rednet and it sends and that's all you have to worry about if you want you can still do it that way or you can do it a little bit more complex way that can probably make for some nifty little gadgets and contraptions. What we've got is the modem API, okay? So you can see here I'm wrapping uh, a variable called modem. I'm doing peripheral wrap, the uh, peripheral on the right. So we're just hooking into that modem right there directly. And uh, what we can do first is print to determine if the modem on, uh, on this side here is open on a certain channel. Now channels can go uh, from anywhere from, I think, either zero or one it starts at, and it can go up to uh, the integer max, which is 65. 1535 but you can only have 128 different channels open at any given time so you can't have like all 65,000 ports open at once you can only have 128 open and listening for a specific message okay um, so that's the deal so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna first check hey is that uh, is, is let's say uh, we're calling it I'm calling it port 3 because I'm thinking of it like a network communication channel uh, but you, it's technically called a channel okay uh, so we're saying hey is that channel number three open uh, all right, we're going to get back true or false on that guy. So is open returns true or false given a specific channel. Okay, so uh, then we're going to open up channel three, and then we're going to check again. Hey, is that channel three open? And what will probably happen is we'll get false, and then uh, it'll open it, and then we'll get true. And then we're going to use the uh, event system. So we're going to use the OS pull event command right here. Okay, and we're going to wait for the modem underscore uh, message. Okay, so that's what we're getting right there. So pull event modem underscore message. Cool. Uh, now, uh, what we're going to do then is print out all the information that we get back from it. The event that got pulled, the side that it was uh, on the modem that it received the message on, and then the channel that it came over. So right now we're opening up channel 3, so we should get the message over channel 3. And then uh, also another piece of information that the sender can send is uh, what's called the reply channel, and that's specifically telling it what channel to reply on if you want to wait for a reply. And then we've got the message itself and the distance away. Way, uh, from the two uh, computers and then at the end I'm closing channel 3 now on this side I'm hooking up uh, a program called send message and it's real easy we wrap the peripheral again so modem is wrapped back here and there's three pieces of information we want to send what channel to send the message over to uh, what receive channel so uh, or the reply channel that's the channel that uh, we're telling it to reply to so basically we're just saying hey over here uh, which channel to reply to that's listed right here. So I'm saying reply to me on channel one. And the message is hello world. So let's see what happens, okay? Make sure your uh, guys are hooked up here. And so we got false. So that means channel three was not open. So we opened it and then we got true. And now it's just sitting there waiting to get a message from another computer on the network. So let's go ahead and satisfy that by doing mod send, okay? That's going to send a message over channel three on the network, okay? And you can see right here, the, uh, the, the event that got pulled was modem underscore message, like we were waiting for. The side is right. The modem is on the right side, so that makes sense. Uh, the send channel was three, as I specified. Okay. And uh, let's just go in here. You can see that. Send channel was three. The reply channel was one. And the message was hello world. And the distance away is four blocks. All right, makes sense. Now, what if we wanted to tell it to reply on a different channel? Say, uh, don't reply on channel one. Please reply on channel five. Boom. So now we've just changed the reply channel. So the message still came through. 
on send channel three, and the reply channel was five. Makes sense, right? Now here's the cool part, right? Let's go ahead and run this program again. We're waiting for a message. But instead of sending the message on channel three, I'm going to transmit the message on channel six. Cool, what's gonna happen? Let's see. We didn't get the message. Look, it's not there. Why is that? Because we're, we're transmitting on channel th 6, but we're expecting and waiting for a message on channel 3 because 3 is the only modem channel that's open at the moment. So let's make sure we can receive a message on 6. So we're going to edit the program, and we're going to go ahead and do modem.open6. So now both channel 3 and channel 6 are open. Okay. And when we wait for a program here, we're going to go ahead and uh, transmit a message again. And now, because both channel 3 and 6 are open, we got the message on channel 6 right there. Cool? So you can use this to your advantage. You can have a bunch of different uh, computers here all over the place, right? And you can send and uh, receive messages on different channels. So I could have like a bunch of network computers and I could say, you know, you listen on channel 1 and 2, you listen on channel 5, you guy over there listen on channel 10. And then I can send messages to the different computers by specifying uh, the channel that's sending it. And I can also specify which uh, ch channels to uh, send the response on. So maybe different computers could be listening on different response levels and it doesn't have to necessarily be the channel uh, that it was sent over. So I could say, hey, uh, you know, this computer here, listen on channel one and, uh, you know, send a message on channel four to this guy and tell him to reply on channel two, which is a computer over here. You can imagine just how complex this could get. And you could really build some really neat and intricate designs if you got really in depth with it. So that is the modem API. And uh, that I think is pretty cool. All right, so there's one more thing I'd like to show you guys, and that's with regards to Redstone. Uh, in 1.5 of Minecraft, they added it so that Redstone can actually uh, store and, and, and detail the strength of the signal, and this has been uh, added to ComputerCraft as well with uh, basically uh, a, an addition to the Redstone API. In the past, you could uh, get the uh, input on a side, and you can determine, you know, how uh, you know how much uh, if there's a Redstone is on or off on a particular side, and you could set the input or output, and you could say, you know, go ahead and output a Redstone signal true or false. Now you can specify the strength. So if we go in here we can see uh, redstone.get analog input on the right tells you the strength of the redstone signal on the right. Okay and then we've got the set analog output on the back. I'm setting it to four and that sets the strength of the analog output on the back. So we can go ahead and run the program here and we'll see that the analog input is nine. That's the current strength coming in and then we set the output to four. One, two, three, four is on but the fifth block is not. Now, if I wanted to uh, turn that light on, I think I need to have at least five. Ta-da! The light turned on. Cool. So you can see here that that is the uh, changes to the redstone. You can actually manipulate it at the analog level and uh, do your whole thing. Pretty cool. All right. Nice. And with that, guys, I think we're about ready to wrap up the ComputerCraft Spotlight. Hope you guys enjoyed checking it out. There's a bunch of new gadgets here. The whole uh, modem API, I think, is pretty cool and might be useful for some really complex builds with ComputerCraft. Uh, of course, we've got monitors on the floor and ceiling, the ability to talk to monitors over wired networks, as well as printers and other computers, and the RedNet changes, uh, allowing you to interact with the new Redstone mechanics of vanilla Minecraft 1.5. So, ComputerCraft version 1.53 is now available. Go ahead and give it a download and uh, hope you guys enjoyed the spotlight. Take it easy.